A snowflake is a crystal of ice that's formed when water vapour condenses directly onto the ice crystal without going through the liquid phase. It's not frozen water or frozen rain. Snowflakes display six-fold symmetry and can take up an almost infinite amount of beautiful patterns. But are they really all unique? To investigate this, I'd first like to consider why snowflakes have six-fold symmetry and then why they can form such elaborate patterns. When ice is formed, water molecules align themselves in a crystalline arrangement. This is a water molecule, H2O. Two hydrogen atoms are bonded to one oxygen atom. When the water molecules join together to form ice, each oxygen makes a weaker bond, called a hydrogen bond, with two other hydrogen atoms. So now, the oxygen is bound to four hydrogens. Three of these bonds form a buckled honeycomb layer, and the fourth connects to the layer above or below. It is this hexagonal honeycomb structure that gives snowflakes their six-fold symmetry. The crystal grows as new water vapour molecules condense onto the ice crystal, but they can only join in a particular pattern, so that means that every new molecule that joins must add to the symmetry. So why are there so many unusual structures? Well, ice crystals build up differently depending on the conditions of temperature and humidity that they see as they form. Let's start with humidity. Lower humidity causes facets to form. These are the straight edges that build up in an hexagonal arrangement. When there aren't very many extra molecules about, then they tend to settle in the rough areas of the crystal rather than the smooth spots. So over time, the rough spots get filled in, leaving only the straight, smooth edges. These are the facets, and it's these facets that reflect the light and make snow look white. Higher humidity causes branching. When there are lots of extra molecules around, then the bits that stick out, like the corners, will tend to gather more molecules. And then, as they gather more molecules, they'll stick out even more, and so then gather even more. And so branches can form. This is an instability, and once branches start to form, they can grow quite quickly. And secondly, temperature. As the temperature increases, snowflake structure tends to go from plates to columns, then back to plates, and then back to columns again. But experts don't know exactly why this is. Changing conditions can lead to unusual shapes, such as induced side branching. So if the snowflake starts as a hexagonal plate, and then it moves into an area of high humidity, then branches will start to form. But then if it gets blown into an area of low humidity, then the growth will slow down and facets will be created on the edges of the branches. Then if the snowflake moves back into an area of high humidity again, then small branches will start sprouting on the edges of the original branches. So we'll get small sub-branches created. In this way, very complicated structures can be formed. All branches see the same atmospheric conditions, so the structure will grow symmetrically. But not all snowflakes are perfect when they land. If they have a collision with another snowflake, or with a water droplet, or any melting on the way down, this will all affect the snowflake's symmetry. It is this constant change in conditions, as the snowflake blows through the clouds, that gives the snowflake its individual, unique structure. Every snowflake sees slightly different conditions, even if they move very close to each other. So they will always be very slightly different if you look closely enough. A snowflake structure is a unique map of its life and development, but a very fleeting one. So look closely because they won't last long. If you like snow or other random science facts, then subscribe to Head Squeeze.